Today we're going to continue our discussion with the SQM5 actuator and we're going to explore the Z-board or multi-input option. With the Z-board you can use 0 to 20 milliamp inputs, 4 to 20 milliamp input, 0 to 10 volt input, and 0 to 135 ohm input. For this demonstration we're going to assume that we're using a 4 to 20 milliamp signal and that the motor is on black scale. Let's get started. There are a few features first take note of on the actuator, one being the manual and auto switch. When line voltage is applied to the motor and the, the manual auto switch is in the manual position, you can drive the actuator open and close with these arrow buttons. Now if you switch the manual auto switch to auto, there's a few additional functions that you can get. First being, if you power if you power line voltage to terminal A, you can drive the actuator fully open or to cam setting 1. If you supply line voltage to, power to terminal Z, you can drive the actuator fully closed or to the cam 2 position. If you supply line power to terminal ZL, you can drive the actuator to cam position 3. We recommend to setting cam position 2 and cam position cam position 3 to the same settings unless there's a good reason to do so otherwise. Powering terminal L1 will allow you to modulate the motor using one of the multiple input functions of the board. These are the input terminals. And the Z board also allows for 0 to 20 milliamp output, 4 to 20 milliamp output, and 0 to 10 volt output signals. This is an important notice. When powering any terminal on the actuator, you should only power one line terminal at a time. Powering multiple terminals at once could result in damage to the motor. While the motor has the L1 terminal powered and you're in release to modulate, this OPE min-max switch on the back here also has some functionality. If it's in the OPE position, that means that the motor will modulate based on whatever input signal is being given to the motor. You flip this to the max setting, it'll drive the motor up to cam position 1. If you set this to the min setting, it'll drive the actuator down to cam position 3. You also notice this max pot and this min pot on the back. Both of these can be used to span your incoming input signal. In addition to the min and max pots, you'll also notice this POS pot on the back of the actuator. This corresponds to the P input terminal on the front of the actuator. If you supply line voltage to this P, ter to this P terminal, all analog input signals will be overwritten and the actuator will move to a position set by the POS potentiometer. This, this position can be set to any spot within the actuator's range of operation defined by switches 1 and 2. The Z-board also allows for linearization using the J1 jumper. The J2 jumper can be used for either parallel operation or master-slave operation. If you have any other questions on these specific functions, please contact our tech support or your Siemens sales representative. One last feature to take note of are the remaining three switches here on the back end of the actuator. These switches are auxiliary switches and are set by cams 4, 5, and 6. Each of these switches have a common, normally open, and normally closed spade terminal. That wraps up this video on the SQM5 actuator. If you have any additional questions on any additional features, functions, or settings, please contact your SCC sales rep or our tech support. Also, please be sure to browse the links below for additional videos on any other boards on the SQM5 or for an overview of some of the key features of the motor.